Hi there, it's Nicole here today and I am sharing this set of Sweet Friends Valentine's cards featuring a whole bunch of the new stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn, part of their Valentine's 2018 release, as well as mixing and matching in some older Lawn Fawn dies, or previously released, I guess I should say, Lawn Fawn dies, and a Simon Says Stamp gingham background to instantly add some of that depth and dimension and a pattern to the background to bring some interest to the background without actually having to add an additional layer. The Sweet Friends is this adorable little set of stamps that comes with all kinds of little food images that one of the things that I am most excited about is you can add the arms and legs to these images, which is what I'm going to do today to make them into little characters, or you can use them as is. You can add faces to them or not. It really is just completely up to you. And why I love this is because if adding the little faces and things to your images is not your thing, then you can still get lots of use out of this stamp set. The greetings are all very punny, um, so they work really well with this and they make super cute, fun cards. And mix and match this with some of your other food images from Lawn Fawn. These are fantastic. There is another donut stamp set from Lawn Fawn that this would be cute with. There's ice cream and other treats, all kinds of things that you could really mix and match with if you wanted to. So I am using the stamp platform from Tim Holtz and stamping all of my images with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. You can see I'm using a scrap piece of white cardstock here. I am stamping three of the four characters I'm using on the set of four cards I'm sharing today. That's because I went ahead prior to filming my video, kind of getting a feel for what I wanted to do. It had been a few days since I had created and so it took me a little bit to get into um, the rhythm of crafting and creating. And I went ahead and created one card from start to finish completely before going and creating the rest of them assembly line style. So we're going to have the little cupcake. We also have the Froyo and we have the s'more. And then the card that I've already finished features the donut. Very similar, lots, I'm using all the same marker colors throughout the design. The only image you won't see me color is the donut. It does feature colors um, that you've seen here, plus the addition of um, a couple of other brown tone markers that I used, but very similar coloring. Whatever you like to color with is perfect for this. The colors of markers I'm using are shown either along the left side of the screen or along the top, depending on kind of where I'm coloring within the screen here. I wanted to be able to have the marker colors visible. I did try to color all like items. So I started with the s'more and I did it from start to finish. Next, I moved on to the red marker and because this is mostly for those little accent pieces, the strawberries and the hearts, I went ahead and colored all of those together since I already had my red markers out. But for the uh, the cup of Froyo and for the cupcake, those are both going to be colored kind of from start to finish, I guess, if you wanna call it that. The images are pretty quick. The coloring went really quick. I knew I wanted to stay in the pinks and reds color family pretty much with the exception of the the ice cream cup and then my neutrals for chocolate or you know the graham crackers the marshmallows things like that this little pop of aqua here is going to tie in really nicely with the lawn fawn peacock cardstock that i'm going to be using to build the base i started out with stamping and coloring all my images however this card features lots of die cutting. So really the little characters, whilst the star of the show definitely, um, are a very small portion of this whole design. Everything from the background to the heart accents 
are going to be die cut from Lawn Fawn cardstock to really build the card base. I think it also gives that feeling of Valentine's Day, um, kind of like when we were kids and we would cut out hearts and layer them and all that kind of thing to make our own Valentines. It's so much easier nowadays with all these fantastic dies. And I really, really love that Lawn Fawn came out with more heart dies in the outside in stitched heart stackables and lacy heart stackables. Just adds to their whole collection of the outside in. Lots of ways to use them. Fantastic for shakers, for windows, all kinds of things like that. Once all my coloring is done, I'm going to take the coordinating Sweet Friends dies, snip those apart with some wire cutters. I like to tape my dies in place over the images so that I can run as many of these through my die cutting machine with one pass as possible. There's gonna be multiple passes, especially because the arms and legs, the strawberries and the hearts, there are multiples of these. So I'm gonna have to run them through multiple times anyway, but I'm a big fan of running it through my die cutting machine as few times as possible to get the most out of my time. Next, I am going to show, I did pre die cut all of these pieces off camera. I'm just showing where all of them came from, the little heart from the tiny gift box. Those are little extra pieces I'm not gonna use. The lacy heart stackables, I've got a couple of different sizes there. The arrow from the stitched heart envelope, that's that large large stitched heart envelope Lawn Fawn came out with last year. And then of course the outside in stitched rectangle stackables. This is going to be the base. And this is what we're gonna work on next to get that great plaid or gingham background. I'm gonna just simply use the stamp platform again. I'm not gonna really line this up with the top of the platform, but instead kind of go in the middle and I'm gonna mask off the edge from the stitched line to the scalloped border. That's going to leave the gingham backdrop so that it does not stamp on that area. It probably, if you wanna save some time, you can totally skip that step, but you can see it just kind of leaves that blank. It almost serves as a, another mat or layer without actually having to have one. I like having that scallop free of the stamped design. I flipped the cover of my stamp platform around. This machine is fantastic for that because you can just simply pop out the cover of this to either use rubber, you can see in the upper left corner it says rubber, and if you pop it out and flip it around, it's for clear stamps. This is the raspberry background that I am stamping with the Lawn Fawn Chili Pepper ink. Lawn Fawn doesn't have a raspberry ink that coordinates with the raspberry cardstock. To combat this, I just use the chili pepper. It's going to be a little deeper and darker than it is on the chili pepper background that I'm gonna stamp this on as well. But very, very similar. It's still not gonna be overpowering and I'm still gonna have that look. I just tried to pick an ink that would complement it. For the rest of them, including the card that I've already finished that's on the ballet slippers background, that's ballet slippers ink on top. Here is a look at the remaining backgrounds. So I've got chili pepper on the chili pepper and raspberry backgrounds and peacock on the peacock background. I am taking the Spellbinders tool-in-one tool and just popping out any of those little areas that maybe didn't come all the way out when I die cut these lacy heart stackables. I love these, they have that doily look to them so very feminine, very, you know, beautiful. I love the detail on this, including look at that little one. Isn't it adorable? Next, I kind of went through and laid out all of my dies to get the best assortment of colors on each background. I really kind of just went through and die cut everything. Um, and then I mixed and matched them on the backgrounds. I wanted to do this prior to hearing anything just so that I didn't end up with maybe the peacock lacy heart on a peacock background. It's gonna blend into the background. You want it to kind of pop off and still be able to see it. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere everything on this card to show you kind of from start to finish how I adhered everything. All of the rest of the cards 
are exactly the same. I've got that little trio of hearts I stamped and colored and die cut. I've got my layered hearts there at the upper part of the background. Then in the little layered hearts, I went ahead and put some Nuvo Crystal Glaze in the smallest heart, and I'm popping that arrow in place. That's gonna serve as adhesive as well as a cute little accent to really finish that heart off really nicely. I also added Nuvo Crystal Glaze to the little hearts. So I'm gonna do that on the remaining two cards. If there are eyes on any of the images, I'm gonna take a black glaze pen and add detail to those to really help make them pop. Once I have my backgrounds all finished, all everything is adhered, I am ready to go through and add some really cute stamped greetings, which as I mentioned earlier, are very punny. So they're, they really coordinate nicely with all of these images. I did take a fine detail black pen and add some little seeds to the strawberries. This is a great time if you want to add any extra detail to the images, go ahead and do that now. I did lay out my greetings to make sure I had everything exactly right. I apologize, I leaned over there to get that straight. So the first greeting is going to read, and this is for the s'more, I need some more friends like you. Now on the card that I didn't do in camera, because it was a light pink background, I could kind of do a few different things. So if you did all lighter backgrounds, you could as well. I went ahead and mixed and matched my inks for the greeting. I really felt though on the raspberry, chili pepper, and peacock backgrounds, if I tried to add some let's say red ink to the peacock background, it was gonna get lost into that cardstock design. So I stuck with black ink for all the rest of my greetings. Let's go ahead and add some of that Nouveau Crystal Glaze to the rest of the cards, all the little hearts here, the Froyo cup, Anything that you wanna add a little extra glaze to, now is the time to do it. If you wanna add white pen detail to the cheeks, if you're not adding Nouveau Crystal Glaze or Glossy Accents, go ahead and do that first. If you are, I really recommend waiting until the Crystal Glaze or Glossy Accents, whatever you're using, is completely dry, and then going in on top of that and adding some white pen detail. Otherwise, I find it tends to get lost once you add that liquid on top. So I like to wait and do that when everything's dry. My final step for all of these cards before I add them to a white top fold card base is to take some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White. If you guys have been watching me at all through maybe the holiday season or and, and before, the Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White, it's an opaque white, it is my favorite, it is fantastic for adding some really cute little white dot detail. This helps frame up the little characters so, so well. Um, it's just one of those little finishing touches you don't have to do, but I think it adds a lot to the design. I'm going all the way around that heart, adding little drops of white. I love this that with the Nouveau Crystal Drops, you can add little drops in whatever size you want. I'm even gonna go around the little heart here, the heart that I've added glossy, or not glossy accents, in this case, the Nouveau Crystal Glaze to, and just finish them off, give them that cute little detail. If I missed any white dots on cheeks, I'm gonna do that now with my white pen. I'm gonna add all of these to white top fold card bases then, add some coordinating Simon Says Stamp colorful envelopes. They have such a beautiful array of envelopes. I'm using the Cotton Candy Doll Pink Schoolhouse and Audrey Blue envelopes to go with these really cute, fun Valentine's cards. Thanks for joining me today for this set of four cards featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I use to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.